Welcome to the second Budgie podcast. We're so excited. Um, we've got a, a living legend here with us today, uh, a multiple time kickboxing champion, king of the ring champion, international champion, world champion. Um, we've also got a sub for Kamal Buddy today. It's his birthday tomorrow and he's getting his hair done. So we've got Jacob joining us. Jacob's an, also an up and coming MMA fighter. He's gonna correct me shortly. He works with me in real estate and is a super talented singer. And it's our great honor to welcome Ants Danson to hey. the Budgie Podcast number two. Both. Thank you for having us, fellow. Oh, oh, good. Can I get a hug too? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're a legend. Thanks for giving us this honor. And um, please share with some of those people who might not know some of your accolades um, and some of your great achievements to date. Cool. To start um, off with, please. Th thank you very much for having me here. I'm very honoured. Um, it's always a pleasure talking to you, bro. You know, um, some of my um, achievements in life: I'm world champion, WKB world champion, um, WMAF international champion, five-time New Zealand champion, and two-time King of the Ring champion. King of the Ring. That's where I first saw you. Um, I see that. Uh the check from yep. the 2013 King of the Ring. Yeah. And uh, you had, we were chatting about it before. You had your hair dyed. Yeah. You just came in in the zone and like, you look scary, bro. Yeah, cool. You look scary. <laughs> and I think that's another reason Kummel didn't come today. He's like, oh, he just saw you online. He's like, oh, bro, he looks dangerous. Uh, <laughs> Jacob, do you want to go? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. I mean, the persona that I have in the ring yeah. is solely just for the ring, you know, just for the ring. And I, and I get that, that, that people see that persona and just think that that's always me, but that's a hard, hard act to keep up, and uh, this is naturally me, I'm always just down, down to earth, you know? Yeah, yeah man, yeah, super, super nice. Um, um, I saw you uh, I, um, beat Hasim Rachman in the Super 8, and we'll come back to that a little bit later, but I was kind of shocked to see you in the mall um, where we exchanged oh, numbers. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, so yeah. So I wanted to ask you, do you often give Indian guys your phone number? <laughs> 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 Only good looking ones. <laughs> nah, um, um, it's still something that I, I, I am like, I, it's, it's something that I um, have trouble with is when people come up in public and they're like, hey, yeah, it's how are you, man? We watched you in this final. I like this and that, this and that. And like, I sort of like cringe up inside. I don't know what it is, but, but um, always when people are genuine i'm genuine back you know and, and it was cool it was cool to meet you that day thank you bro I was, uh, I was super happy i saw you from the corner of my eye and i'm like that's Ants nansen i should go go talk to him and you were super nice yeah um and all our interactions and conversations and coffees we've had like you're such a good person and i, oh, I hope cool, through this you. pod some people can see other other sides of you uh, oh, okay. that i mean i consider you a friend a brother also a toko a budgie <laughs> um, yeah. like uh, honored, honored to um be on this pod with you but um Take it away, brother. Share how it all started, where you grew up, a yep. um, bit about your background, whatever ah, you cool. want to share, your family, how you got into fighting. Yeah. Um, I, I, I grew up in a Samoan household, mother and father. I'm from Samoa. Yeah. So they come over here uh, to seek better life. Uh, we were born and raised in Mangri. Yeah. I have um, two sisters. And um, yeah, it was just something that, like, my father sort of installed in us is just like martial arts so we all started doing kung fu first me and my me and my two sisters um i actually sucked at it my two sisters were good at it but um it was something that he always sort of wanted us to do just for like self-defense and making sure that we could like stand, stand up for ourselves you know yeah so we um that, well, that was sort of installed in us and then coming through like um with um with being like no brothers, I don't have any brothers. Yeah. And then, sort of like, I went to St. Peter's College in Newmarket. Yeah. It was like, I don't know, there was always trouble around me anyway. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, and so, like, I think these, like, things helped me sort of, like, uh, be a better fighter. And then when I could, when I did click, like, oh, hold, hold on, I could actually fight. It was good, you know? Yeah. But um, moving on later on in life, I, I, um, I met up with someone that I was working with at the time, and he's like, hey, listen, uh, we've got a bit of a, uh, um, a gym going on. There's only a few of us. Um, would you want to come out? And we went out, and it was, um, at that time, it was the Thai brothers, which is Daniel Thai, Raphael Thai, Jordan Thai, and Josh Thai. They were um, coached by their fathers at, the, at, at that time. All the brothers are all, like, internationally well-known. All great fighters are. Jordan's um, on the K1 team, like, he blitzed the K1 team at one point. But um, yeah, went out there, started training with them, and 
having that same mentality from when I knew that I could fight, like I could throw hands, going to them and I was like, just put me in the ring. Oh, I can fight, you know, I can do this. Um, I think I trained for about a couple of months and then um, they threw me in the wing, ring. I uh, got my, my ass absolutely handed um, to me. But I actually, one of my good mates now, he's my good mate now, I, um, just got smashed by him for like whole three rounds. But um, from there, like the, the, the passion for the sport just grew from there, yeah. Wow. The, um, uh, apart from the King of the Ring, another uh, moment that hangs out in my memory of you is um, I saw something pop up years ago with um, you on the uh, you and Dan Hooker sparring in the gym. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah. It was a crazy sparring session. Yeah. Um, I don't know, like. I always when I see when I see when I seen Dan after like being away for a little bit, yeah. I seen him, I was like, hey bro, yeah. like this is um so at that time he wasn't famous on UFC or no, anything, no. and um and then now that I've seen him, I went up to him, I was like, shook his hand, I was like, hey man, thanks for making me famous, you know, and it just went viral, you know, like everyone just seen this um, coconut, this big coconut trying to beat up this little white guy, you know, yeah. but um it was cool, um we had close ties with Strike Force at that time, yeah, and um. Dan Hooker was a strike force, of course, and they had a fundraiser, you know, and it was on a Sunday night, and they told me it was going to be just light and easy, you know, but, um, nah, it was far from that, far from that, the, the gym is well known, strike force is well known for, like, yeah, yeah. just going hard, like, so, so I believe that that's why their fighters are quite good, is that, so the, um, the, how do you say it, the, what you feel in the ring is quite hard to sort of, like, uh, replicate, you know, but they replicate that in their gym. And, and they spar super, super hard, you know? Yep. The intensity that they have is, I think that's why they have successful fighters. And so that's yeah, that's what I walked into that night, a fundraiser with, um, it was like fight club, you know? Like there was no ring, it was just yeah, a, yeah. A, a group of people. And if you like go into them, they'll push you back in. It was crazy, but it was cool, it was cool, yeah. That's right. Do you think that's good for long term? For long term? If you're a young, young fighter, up and coming? <clears throat> um, if it's regulated, like by, by, by the coaches, you know? Yep. Like, I believe, like, being kickboxing, yep. it's, it's a little bit different from boxing. Yeah. So we've got eight weapons, elbows, knees, uh, kicks. Yep. So we don't get so much trauma to the head. So I believe uh, it's, it's, it is quite good. I, I believe it does have its uh, time and purpose, you know? Yeah. And come, uh, early on in your career, um, you were training at uh, ETK? Yep. Yeah, yep. Um, how was that? That was real good. That was real good. So... So I um, started, um, uh, so after the, the kickboxing mishaps, yeah. I sort of gave that a rest and then um, I, I had started doing um, boxing over in Mario 232 and they hold a um, function there, they had like a fight club there. So I started doing um, boxing there, yeah. um, had about three or four fights there, boxing ones. In-house or? Uh, no, it was like uh, against other boxing gyms oh, yeah, that. Okay. Yeah. It was quite good, like it was quite a good little setup, you know, like yeah. um, it was a community gym, you could go train there for free, you know, so it was oh, real me. cool. Yeah. Had three, two, three, uh, sorry, three, four fights there, um, and then I'd met J Jason Suddy there, and he was like, "Hey, listen, if you ever, if you, you can, you can fight, obviously, you know. Yeah. If you want to, ever want to take it seriously, this is my gym. Come down, you know." Um, went down, seen him. I had a mate that was already training there, so um, at that 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 time, I didn't really like. I was sort of like in between jobs. Didn't really, wasn't really taking anything serious, you know. Yeah. Just had my son. Yeah. So like um. It was a cool time in my, uh, cool period of my life to meet someone like Jason Suddy, you know? Yeah. So like, um, yeah, he just sat me down and was like, listen, this is just a kickboxing gym. Um, I believe that you, you, you got some skills, but we can do further, we can do something with this, you know? Yeah. We can we can make a living off this, like like he has. Yeah. So I said, sweet, let's, let's get to it. Told me the, like the bare minimum of what he expects from me, like the trainings and that. Yeah. Cool, so we got into that. Um, at that point in time, Jason Suddy has, was was thinking about retiring you know well he was almost forced because i mean there's a story that i'm, I'm sure he'd like to tell you himself but i'll just tell you briefly is that he had a, a real bad neck injury at the time right a real bad neck, neck injury and the doctors had told him listen every fight you take you're risking mm. um not being able to walk again get hit the wrong way and then not being able to walk again um so so jason took that on board as okay cool I'm gonna make these my best fights. I'm going out for bang. And um, at that time, there was about three or four heavyweights around the same size as us. And then there was a couple of guys that were like a lot bigger than us, super heavyweights. Yeah. Um, we were his main sparring partners, man. And like, no shit, like 
talking about intensity. Yeah, yeah. Like we were getting a, he was getting a fresh person every single time. Yeah. And like um, I was part of that group, you know. Yeah. And like no shit, we we would be like just smashing each other. Like I would bare minimum was like a bleeding nose, you know. That was just a minimum. Yeah. Ble- bleeding nose, bleeding mouth. Um, yeah, but but from that, yeah. I believe that that's how. I, how I sort of developed my skills a whole lot fa- faster. Right. Yeah, and from yeah. that, I understood how important it was to have good people in your life, especially around this thing. Because at the end of those rounds, every single time, without a doubt, he would hug us. Yeah. And he'd be yeah. like, hey, thank you, brothers, you know. And every time at the end of sparring, he'd be so grateful, you know. Even though we're like black eyes, clean <laughs> nose, I've, I've had my nose broken from there before. Yeah. But like, um, it was just cool to have that, like, to separate emotions from what we're trying to achieve there you know and and he was just getting uh the best firing he could mm. but also drawing the best out of us you know and it was a cool period of my life to sort of start and that's where i started my kickboxing and i, and I honestly believe that's how i got a whole lot better a whole lot faster yep. was just grinding it out with the best because he is the best he's our six-time world champ you know yeah yeah um and at that time you were taking, correct me if I'm wrong, like some of the hardest fights on really, really short notice? Yeah, so, so um, Jason's a good, like he's a big believer in a fighter fights, you know? Mm. So, so if you're a fighter and it's, it's what you want to do, you want to be ready. So we're always in the gym. So if fights are pop up, like these are the perfect opportunities for you to sort of level up. Let's just get to it, you know, let's just fight. And, and, and it was, it was a cool, it was a cool time period in my life where Jason had good management skills, had good connections that people were calling him, okay, like, listen, we've got this uh, show in Japan and we, we want, um, pretty much, we want someone to just like, come over with some good credentials and we can just beat them up, you know? Jason's got, see, like, well, I've got the guy, I've got the guy. And then oh, just, I was on the plane like within two weeks, we're over there like fighting, fighting in front of like, I can't remember exactly, but it was in the Saita- Saitama Arena. Yeah. Which is huge, you know? And and the guy that they put me up against, the whole show was made for him, like thousands of, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of dollars put into the show yeah. um, for this guy to shine, you know? And he had won uh, previously the Olympics just before he had won um, silver in, the, in, the, in judo. Yeah. And he, uh, anyway, I, I was very fortunate. Uh, we went in a real solid game plan and um, and just that will to win and that will to fight, like just uh, just the... To do the best you can, you know, and then and, and we did. We, we 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 won. We won. We won a real good fight. How was that experience out there, like flying overseas? Because that would have been your first. That was my first to fight. First time flying overseas to to fight. Yeah, it was actually. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually, couldn't have, but yeah, it was. Um, it, it was so so so. The good thing about Jason is that Jason's real good with mindsets. and he's real good at reading you and like saying, okay, like this, okay, this is what my 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 fighter needs, you know. So when he told me like, okay, we've, we've got this fight in Japan, told me the whole rundown of it. Of course, in, in my heart, I'm like, yeah, hard, let's do this. But my brain, my brain starts telling me like, hold on, they've made this, they put all, all this money into this guy. This guy's meant to be, have this rep in there. Like, that's not really a good, like, you know, like for your brain, it's not, not, not really good as a, you know, like I uh, sort of like trying to manage yourself. It's not a good, good um, decision what you're doing. But um, I believed in him and I, I believe like, what he was saying was true, so it was cool. Uh, the two weeks that we did have, we we um, just compacted a whole camp. You know, I was already sort of semi fit. I knew no because it was an MMA fight. Never fought MMA in my life. This was my debut. Oh, wow. you know, like um, we brought in a guy named Billy Scanlon, um, who who's fought MMA before, and then um, Kula, who takes uh, jiu jitsu out of ETK still to this day. And it was cool. We just compacted in a little camp on on um, not fearing the floor. Not fearing that, not not fearing um, what he's good at, but but concentrating at what I was good at, you know, and that was just striking. And um, yeah, I was very lucky. I had a good team then. Yep. So did you focus just like hitting pads, hard, explosive, how you were saying before, or was it? Um, it was. Game? Yeah, no, nah, it was like sort of, it was sort of like very long, a very long sort of um, long explosive sort of um, thing. It was like to be honest, we sort of always treated like a stew fight. Like you just sort of very like. Um, cautious, cautious, cautious. But as soon as I sort of seen the opening, I was just like a hundred and I was like throwing about three or four punches, 
trying to like at least connect one of them. And if none of them connected, I was back out again, have a look, have a look, attack and attack the leg and, and sort of like um we have this thing sort of like we just brought in a focus. So if you just start throwing punches, then you only have to concentrate on this little box, you know? But what we done is we just like make a control for the whole box. So we we're like kicking his leg, kicking his leg and shooting into his head, you know? And we we're always trying to change levels, just making sure that he was like his his uh concentration box was, was a lot bigger, you know, so he didn't have a chance to shoot. And it, and it worked. It worked perfectly, man. Yeah. Coming back to the mindset, because um, uh, David Tool's good friends with Jason Sadi as well. Yep. And he says that uh, he, they have a lot of love and respect between them. But one of the things that he really respected about his fighting career was that uh, Jason wasn't scared to go go in and fight bigger people because normally the bigger guys want to fight the smaller guy. But um, he just yeah, no, no fear. I um yeah, like uh, like I, I believe like. He's a lot further on in life than I, and, 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 but he's got some real cool stories. I can only share some, yeah, yeah, yeah. but um, but we're cool if you got him on the podcast too. But he had this, he had this thing like, there was a guy named Paula Mattelli, and, and they went to the, the, you know, you get to your um, ref's um, rules and like in the center, they pull you to the center ring. And you see Jason like, he's like tippy toeing, and he's like looking at him, and he's like he's just constantly going up and down like this, like, and, and you're like, wonder what, what he's thinking in that. I only know this because he shared this with me, but he honestly, in his brain, thought that he was the exact same size as this guy. He had mentally made himself or fooled himself into thinking that he was exact, but that, the, the height difference was ridiculous. I would say like it would be about that much. But in his brain, he had like, like prepared himself, like now I'm the same size as this guy. And he ended up actually end up creaming this guy. Like the, the guy was no slouch either. The guy's uh, uh, prolific like, um, He's a real good good boxer and stuff, you know, like, so yeah, but these are the things that like, like, um, separate Jason from the rest, you know, and it, yeah, and it helped me along the way in my career, heaps. I think it's probably the perfect time to bring this in, uh, so for us looking from the outside in, we see uh, Jason as a legend, like, uh, I really like how he's sharing like the Wim Hof stuff, the ice baths, yep. and, and just how he treats his family and, and his son. Um, but we we were chatting about like you sparred and, and worked with some of the top fighters to, to come um, out of New Zealand. Yeah. Um, who was the most memorable or the most the person that you enjoyed or appreciated sparring with the most? I just have to say Jason Study. And Jason Study. Um, just because I felt like. He brought the best out of me, you know? Yep. He brought the best out of me and his style helped me fortify my style. Because he's very aggressive um, and, and, and he's very super, super fast. I would say he'd easily be one of the fastest heavyweights we've ever had in kickboxing, you know? And um, yeah, just some memorable spars with him. Um, uh, there's another fighter named Dmitry Simakov, who was, was a Russian fighter, probably um, him. And, and of course, the top top athletes like Dan, obviously, I'll never forget like looking at him, fully underestimating him, um, and just getting like the good three piece and a head kick, you know. I've never been rocked by a, like a um, I don't know what he was then, but it definitely wasn't my weight anyway, you know. Like um, I, I'm I'm in awe of some of these men. I've sparred Izzy before, like um, he was very courteous by um, like throwing um. Uh, his his um, trademark question mark kick, yeah. but instead of landing it on my head, would just nip the top of it. You know, like I was like very gracious and very thankful to him for it. Um, yeah, just like all these all these like top fighters, like yeah, yeah. I I remember them, and I, I'm so grateful to share the space with them. You know, and their coaches for letting me share the spaces with them. Mm. Mm. That's awesome, man. It's, it's it's cool to like have the opportunity to be surrounded by such amazing and like yeah. talented fighters eh, to share the ring with them as well. Yeah, I, I believe like sport here in New Zealand, combat sport, like we're, we're too busy like trying to like, well for a while though, we're too busy like trying to like fight with each other. Yeah. Like, we're, like this gym versus that gym or like my fighters can't, but really it's us versus the world, you know, because that, that's where we want our fighters to be. Mm -hmm. We want us to be the, against the world, but I think sometimes we get too busy carried away with like gym versus gym and sort of being anti someone or anti something. Whereas um, 
I think now is like a pretty good time to sort of like collaborate and start like I know I know CKB um, have a, a few other gyms like going up there to help um, help them develop their skills as far as to move on to whatever they want to do on that so that's cool of CKB to do that you know and, and, and um, so sure can gym do that too and it's cool uh, I like it I like it I like that um, you, you, you are so humble and um, like you've got some amazing achievements that I think um, kind of just on Wikipedia so I'll bring them up like um, you beat Hasim Rockman yep. and the Super yep. 8 and he's one of the only people I think to beat Lennox Lewis yep that's yep. a massive achievement. Like, yeah, that was that was that, that was cool. Tell, tell us about the Super Eight and, and that fight and, and who they wanted you to fight and what you said. Yeah, so yeah. um so um again this was only through um Jason's context. Mm. Um they called him like we, we knew that they were looking for a fighter, but we sort of stayed silent on it and um uh Chris Martin, who who um um who's passed now. Um, he's um, he sort of put his feelers out there and, and told them about Jason and the fighter that he might have. You know, so they called Jason. They're like, "Hey, listen, we've got um, this competition, but we already knew. We already knew about this competition and the format and and who was in it." So Jason um, put me forward and he was like, "Cool, um, well, I've got this guy." They rang him back and said, "Sweet, you just you let him know, you know." So Jason rang me, but Jason had already made up his mind. So he didn't tell me that he already made up his mind. So he's already told him, yes, uh, he's going to fight it. Jason rings me up first and just tells me the whole rundown. He goes, up to you if you want to fight, you know? Yeah. Me, uh, you know, uh, unbeknown to me, he's already said yes. Brings me back. <laughs> like how, he, how he sort of fortifies it is, uh, and sort of convinces me is he says, um, listen, this guy from David Tua, um, beautiful, one of the be best fights, you know? Um, knocked out Lennox Lewis. No one else in the New Zealand is going to be able to say that he's fought this guy. He was a world champion. Mm. Only you and David Tua can ever say that, you know? And I was like, I was just so like half out of this message. I was like, yes, we're going to do this. Yes, we got hung up the phone and I was like, yeah, we've got two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> we've got two weeks and I was like, I just had my son, um, my, my second son, Rico. Yeah. yeah, I just had him and he was sort of in intensive care at the time. So like, I was just like, motions were up and down, but again, like, um, just relied on my team for their mindsets and their knowledge and their experience to get me through that, you know? And it was cool. It was cool. Um, I enjoyed it. I loved the fight. The fight was awesome. Um, the fight was a big growing part in my, in my, in my life and in my career. I uh, broke my hand in the first round. First round? Oh, wow. First round or second round? First round. Broke my hand in the first round. That's crazy. I know I don't want to sound like I'm lying, but I can't remember. But well, the first round was so long ago. But I broke my hand in it anyway. Yeah. And I just remember going back to the corner and I was like, ah, oh, this is like this pain in my hand. I think my hand's broken. Jason just fully ignored that and he was like, okay, so the game plan is. And I'm just looking at him like, I wonder if he heard me, you know? So I said, nah, it's all good. My hand's all right. I, I knew it wasn't all right because every time I touched him, even in like the shoulder or the hands, it was just hurting me, you know? But it was cool. We got through and we got the win. Um, we went back to because it's an eight man, you got to fight the next fight. Yeah. And Jason's like, they're not going to pay you, they're not going to pay you for the second fight if you don't get in the ring. He was like, oh, we just wasted our time. It was like, you, you got your one hand's broken, you got the other hand. He doesn't know it's broken, it. and so you're meant to take off your gloves between the fights. Um, I, I left mine on, we just left it on, we weren't taking it off, we we're just going to leave it on, left everything on, just like waited our time. Um, done a good warm up and went out. I didn't get the decision, but I, I lasted all three rounds. And um, I fought a guy that fought at the Olympics. He won silver at the Olympics and that. So it was cool. It was a cool achievement for me. You know, I didn't win the whole eight man, but there was cool parts of it that I believe like like was real good for my heart and real good for my career. You know, man, what an achievement, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What was what was it like being like mentally for you in that position? Like, um. Mentally, it was tough, it was tough, but I think this is something that young fighters should know is that like your corner is like, is gold, you know, and at that point in time and everything that was going on, my team, my coaches, the people I was surrounded with, my family, they like, they were real cool to me, man, like, and they really helped me in, in, in um, all the mental battles that I was going through. Because some of the mental, some of the battles that, that you fight are a lot harder than what you actually end up doing in the ring, you know? Yeah. And it was cool. I, had, I, had, I did have, I have a good team. I have a good team and a good family. That's amazing, man. Like, world champion boxer with a broken hand, went yeah. to Japan, 
fought the guy that the show's for, beat yeah. him. And then um, during that Super 8 promotion, who else did they want you to fight? Ah, so. There were talks and, and what Yeah, so, so it was cool. Like, um, the guy that owned it, I can't remember his name, so I'm real bad for, like, for, for dates and names and stuff. But um, he took me, because UFC was, it was the first UFC show here in New Zealand. So he got us two front row, uh, three front row tickets. So he went and sat at the front. And whole night he's we were like I was getting on uh, on alcohol, which I don't really drink of, but he was uh, I, don't, I felt like I was rude not drinking with him. So he started drinking and stuff, and then he was like, "Hey, listen, like um, you got we, we got a bit of um, momentum going with you fighting Ruckman yeah. and you being the local hero and stuff and all this jazz." I was like, "Yeah, cool, cool, cool." And then he was like, "Listen, um, we're gonna line something up. You reckon you can fight David Tua?" Yeah. And I was like, "What?" And he was like, "You reckon you can fight David Tua?" I instantly just off the bat said no, yeah. and he was like. Well, why, why wouldn't you fight David too? And I was like, he's like my dad, you know, like, this is someone that like, in our household that we like, hold right up there, like, you know, I wouldn't say God because we're quite religious, but like, he's, he's like, he's the man, you know, um, and he just, he was like real dumbfounded about it, he was like, why wouldn't you fight like, someone to further your career, and I was just like, nah, it would be like fighting my dad, it's a lose-lose situation, I, I can't fight him, you know, he went a bit anti me after that, you know, and, and, and they threw out a few other names and that, but um, I believe from that co- from, from that conversation, yeah. we never got anything back from um, Super 8. And, and I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. Like, I, I, I didn't believe you should be forced to fight people that, like, I didn't think it was going to further my career. It was going to deepen his pockets. Yeah. Like, he was going to get money out of it, yeah. but I was never going to get anything other from it, you know? Like, and neither was David Tua, you know? Yeah. But yeah. Oh, yeah, we already really respect you, but I think that just makes us respect you even more. Oh, 100%. Um, and you know, like, uh, you know how they say, like, um, Francis Ngano and Alex Pereira. Uh, Pereira, when they punched the machines and they got the highest scores? Yeah. They only say that because David Tua hasn't punched him. 100%. Yeah, like, oh, we've uh, yeah. we seen him at the heavy bag. Yeah. And um, it's like, that's a death wish. He yeah. Like an age, man. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, they, it's like, I don't know, like the people that, it's like the crew mirror doesn't say how sweet it is or some, some jazz like that, you know? Yeah. Like there's some fighters like uh, David Tua, yeah. 100%, like I would love to see him on that machine. Yeah. Um, Hemi Ahil, he's a Tongan fighter from New Zealand. Yeah, boxer. Um, boxer, yeah. he was actually, during the eight, uh, the Super 8 period, mm. they were trying to prime him up and get him up like to, to uh, professional and like onto that stage, you know? But um, yeah, nah. These two fighters, I'd love to see them on the um and on that machine. I don't even know if we have one here, but yeah, I reckon we record them on it. You know? Yeah, I reckon that UFC just prop up whoever they want to be their star at the time because they only only publish their um. Yeah, their I, I I believe it's a bit of a gimmick. You know, yeah. like I see one guy had it in like this guy's a grown ass man, and you go, I don't know what it was. But Pereira's one was like way more yeah, than his, you know, yeah. I was like, how could that possibly be, you know, like, like I don't know, like I just find, I kind of feel like it's a promotional gimmick, you know. Yeah, bring it to New Zealand, UFC, let's, let's yeah. it out. Yeah, 100%, 100%. We've got hands over here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's, that's where I'm linking this up to is, because um, you two, for your age, you're looking good, man. Yeah, thank like, you. I, like, I can see your old um, smack poster there. Yeah. And you, like, you look younger now. Yeah, um, yeah. Don't hit me, okay? Just <laughs> minus the hair. Minus the hair. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, is there, is this question mark? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It shaved my head. Yeah. Like, you look healthy, and, and I, know, yep. I know you hardly drink. Yeah. And I know David Tua hardly ever drinks. Yeah. And do you think this helped prolong your career and health? Because you're looking good and healthy. Yeah. And um, alcohol is a big part. Alcohol, alcohol is is one of the worst things you could do for your body, you know? Like, what is really the point in alcohol, you know? Mm. To sit there and socially be free, like, um, to, to be social with someone, with your friends, mm. but like, what do you get at? What health benefit do you get? Like, it's, uh, I don't know. I don't, uh, like, it breaks down your, um, uh, what do you call it? What is the word for it? But like, um, like, you know, like, it makes it brings out like the worst of people sometimes, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and um, like the government talk about all these, bad people, bad things in, in, in um, New Zealand, mm. but alcohol, we've got an alcohol shop every single corner in South Auckland, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, um, they talk about, like, um, uh, violence at homes. Violence at homes is the majority because there's alcohol in the home, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, going back into, like, do I, do I think that's why I, I haven't aged mm. as, um, as um, harsh as some others? Like, I do believe that. Yeah, I think I do so. believe that. Um, and I also believe... It's um, 
my uh, like my headspace and and what I've gone through and where I am now. I just feel so much. Um, I'm comfortable with my life. I'm content. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm happy with what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm happy with um, everything and everyone that sort of surrounds me. You know, like I've I've come into a, a time in my life where if it's not good for me mm-hmm. and it's not good for my life mm-hmm. and it's not um, giving me any good like back into my life with anyone I love, then it doesn't have to be here. You know, you can just move on or I can just move away from it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I believe that that's why I think the, my health's gone a lot better here. Yeah. That's awesome, man. And what about, would you say diet played a big part? or how Oh, it- diet played a huge part. <laughs> yeah. Like, the only reason why I went heavyweight is because my coach was angry that I, I, I couldn't, um, the discipline for food wasn't there, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. Re- realistically, I should be cruiserweight, you know? Yeah. But, um, no, nah, there's no discipline for food whatsoever back in the day, you know? Yeah. And then, um, but now I've, 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 um, I've concentrated on diet and um, what I eat and um, when I eat stuff. Um, my brother-in-law Sammy, Sam Hill, yep. he plays a big part in it, and um, premium nutrition, with all you guys have given me, <laughs> plays a big part in it, you know, just, um, I think, with having everything like that, and having your own knowledge, because you've got to believe what you're doing, you know, you can't believe, uh, like, let other people sort of dictate to you, oh, this is going to work, this is going to work, mm. at the end of the day, you've got to believe it, if you don't believe it, it's probably most likely not going to work, you know, and, and, uh, and it's cool, it's been like that for uh, for me for the last couple of years, so I feel like I feel like I'm, I'm in the, my best shape, poss- uh, um, best best state I've ever been in my whole life. You know, like there's this thing that um, Rob Sunny, which is Jason's brother, we do this way in every every month. We weigh yourself in because you your BMI and everything, yeah. and it tells you what the scale says that your insides are the age of. You know, yeah. my mom says 26 at the moment, but I've worked my way down. It was like all the way down, sitting on 26, and I was telling my brother, which is Rob, I was yeah. like, man, this is good, man. I, I'm feeling 26 yeah, now. You know, this has been real good. That's, that's awesome. awesome. Yeah, we were talking, um, you, you mentioned your brother-in-law and he's shredded and he's helping you with your yeah. nutrition and he can fight like um, J- yeah. Jacob shared some of his videos. And his, yeah, um, yeah. His one's next to yours as well. Up yeah, there. he's one king of the ring as well. Yeah. He's one king of the ring as well. Um, he's He's been cool to grind alongside with for, for us, um, coming out of retirement and everything yeah. because his style is a lot different from mine because I come from Jason Sadi's um, gym ETK and they are very, very aggressive, very, very like numbers, you know, yeah. very, very like front foot, front foot, front foot. Um, with him, he, um, with Sammy and, and my sister, they're quite laid back and more Thai style. Yeah. So I think, um, yeah, it's, it's been cool um, being alongside him with this journey at, at, at this point in time, yeah. yeah. Well, I want to talk about some things like, um, still fighting, but not, not fighting, like, um, Every time I, every time I've been fortunate to spend time with you, and we chat about family and kids, and uh, your face just lights up. Yeah. So um, I wanted to ask you. We wanted to ask you, um, what is your motivation for fighting now versus mm. what it was at the beginning? Yep. And also where you're heading cool. in your in your career. Yep. So so when I started. Like everyone, I, I suppose, I don't know, I'm not quite sure. It's just about that fame and glory, you know, like being known to be the best and have the flashiest things, you know, like I, I used to picture myself like driving a real cool car along Mission Bay, you know? Yeah. And um, just being known to be like one of the toughest in, in New Zealand and the world. Um, where I'm at now is like the car I'm driving along Mission Bay, I just want it to be filled with my kids, you know? I want to look to my side and see my kids look in the rear view mirror and see them smiling in the car, you know? It's just like, yeah, it's, it's, it's changed a lot. It's changed a lot um, for me also too. It's about closing off the chapter of being a fighter. I feel like um, the time I was away from fighting in that, um, I could have potentially done a lot more and, and gone a lot further, but I didn't. And that's all good too. I'm content with that. But now that I'm here and, and doing it right now, um, I just want to close off the chapter and do the best I can. Mm-hmm. Um, what I want to do with it is just inspire the next generation. I want to, I want to help them, like, and I want them to believe that there is a life in this in the sport, and there's a, it's a real, real good life. And, and you might not be a, um, you know, might, might not develop to be the best fighter, mm-hmm. but this sport, combat sport in New Zealand, uh, Muay Thai, everyone that that I know, like. It just it produces good people, you know, mm. and um, good morals, and, and it's cool. It's a, it's a cool family to be amongst, you know, and that's what uh, Combat New Zealand is. It's just one big family. So that's where I'm sort of at at the moment. Um, I sort of want to get into, like, uh, 
non-profit will trust, they're like trying to help out the youth of South Auckland, trying to get them, I, I know a lot of it comes down to like cost, trying to get them here and there, so yeah, that's my future plan anyway, is just trying to cut, cut the hurdles that they have uh, so that we can sort of get them in, get them in here. Once we're in here, man, then I can do my, my magic, you know? I, 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 I believe that, like, and I believe that kids will believe what they see. If you, you can tell them all day, you can tell them all day and, and everything, but that's why I'm in the, in the, in the ring still, sort of like, that's my purpose right now, is just to like find it out, like um, show the kids like, hey man, just bang it out, and come out and like, well, there's a good life. There's, yeah, there's so much more to the sport, you know? Yeah, that's so true though, because for example, back before when the sport was actually massive massive yeah considering now because you see lots of kids gyms are packed out now yeah 100%. You know, um, lots of kids are coming in wanting to you know do martial arts combat sports like you said it's a it's a very people are very very kind in this community yeah yeah and i think it's been just portrayed to be a ruthless kind of sport yeah but it's actually a beautiful sport it teaches people how to fight but also how to not fight in yep. the streets you know what i mean yeah like um to an outsider and it uh, looks very violent and sometimes we say yeah it's like um it's, it's violent you know but it's the intentions you know like yeah. you could go out there and have fight i have a fight your intentions are bad mm. but we've come mutually into the ring and now like the actions are might maybe violent but the intentions are you know i still want my the person that i'm fighting so i still want him to go home to his family too mm. you know um so I believe that this, yeah, this sport, like along with the discipline, along with the respect that's built, I reckon it produces good people and, and kind people at that, you know? Yeah. yeah. The, um, so, so your organ age is 26. Yes, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's what it is. So your organ age is 26. You look fit ass, you look yep. good, and you're on a bit of a roll. Um, you won your last few fights. It was real cool to see people like um, Israel and Max Holloway share your story and stuff. Yeah. And, um, you know, do the best. I, I like it when people who don't have to sh tr try to yeah, shine the light on, on yeah. people doing good. And I know, we know that you're doing heaps <coughs> of good behind the scenes and um, oh, sure. we can talk for hours, but I want to share and, because you and David too are really humble. And sure. I, I, if I may, we just want to give you a little bit of a push. Tell the people what you want, bro. Like, wh wh where are you going to fight next? Um, sure, we think, we think, we don't know what you're going to say, but we think you're going to go out with a bang and the best is yet to come in, 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 your, in your fighting career. Yep. And we hope, like, you know, people reach out to you and, and do what you want. But this is, put it out there, bro. Put it out there to the universe. Like, if you had two more fights in you or three more fights in yep. you, and, um, you know, money was an object and... It, uh, associations or, or federations were all open to it mm. who would you like to fight and where and bare knuckle yeah bare knuckle would definitely be one yeah that would actually be my last fight i, I wanna i wanna go out with i believe that bare knuckle is like the it's like taking it back just like away from all the gloves away from all the sort of rules and that and we just like uh, that's like the start of combat you know yeah. and I, I feel like i just want to go out like that but before that probably like Try get into one. Try get into another, like a uh, international sort of company in that. Yeah. Um, I'm not like I'm not. I've never been an MMA fighter, but I'll take an MMA fight. I'll fight anyone really. Yeah. And just put me in front of someone, you know. But um, that's where we're at at the moment. There's there's been talks and and a few things uh, thrown out there where, that we're trying to get into being knuckle. Yeah. yeah. That's where we want to end up anyway. Being knuckle like the BKFC. BKFC, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, and um, well, Connor watches our podcast. Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was just about to say he just brought it. He eh? yeah. he just brought it, and uh, Mike Terrell, the champ, he's very interactive on the on the internet and that. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's cool. I, I like what they're doing. Yes, yeah, it's, it's real it's, cool. It's actually cool. Um, it's been fun watching uh, Mike Perry. Oh, Mike yeah. Perry's a worker, eh? Yeah, yeah, he's a beast. He's a beast. He's got like what well, got a real iconic BKFC moment where. I think he's like just he um looks inside just spits yeah. and just all oh, blood comes blood. out and he's like just hands back up and he's ready to go again you know yeah. it's just cool man and it's real interesting because like I mean, he, in, in the UFC he didn't do as good as he's doing in the BKFC but it's just like you said like some people just are drawn to that more primal art form of martial arts yeah and he just seems to light up like he's like 10 scoops of pre-workout let's go he doesn't stop he's really yeah I, th I think i think also too it's like it brings out the savagery in you you know like yeah. because you know there is 
They, they like, I don't want to say pillows, but, but I do get it now. After fighting four ounces, yeah. when you go back to 10 ounces, it always feels like you're like putting padding over your weapons, you know, like you're just padding it. And I fully understand then if they're fighting BKFC, mm. they're what they think of, of gloves, you know. But um, being a, a youth in South Auckland, we all like to brawl. Mm. Like it's just the thing that we've all done. Like it's how we sort of handle banners and that, you know. Yeah. It's just a normal fucking part of life. So, um, I I'm feel like he's 20 and 1. 20 and <laughs> 1. You must be the one. <laughs> uh, but, you know, like, I, I believe South Aucklanders were made for, like, you know, this is us, man. Right. South That's a way of life. Yeah. That was a way of life, you what know, like. Looking at? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That kind of stuff, that kind of thing was, like, kind of harsh, but, like, boxing part, like, there's a real famous clip on, um, that's in of these two school kids. Yeah. And, yeah. like, have you seen that? Yeah. Man, they just like, they look like men. Yeah. They just brawl it up. But it's, it's so respectful. Like, yeah. one guy drops and like sort of puts him back up, asks if he was right, and then they just add it again, you know? Oh, yeah, I, I see yeah. it. I, I went to Manuel High School, and across the road is War Memorial Park. Yeah. There used to be JC students in Manuel High School. Some of the craziest fights I've ever seen. Yeah. But that was one of my motivations to move to the North Shore. <laughs> I was like, I don't want my brothers and sisters to come here, eh? Like, it, yeah. as much as I love South Auckland, so many of my friends and our businesses are here, and, and we love the community. Yeah. Uh, I was like, man, this is rough. Like, yep. and like, I don't see at that time the government or anybody putting in enough of what I thought needed to be there. Mm. Oh, it's still happening to this day. Yeah, you yeah, know, like, like we're well, not forgotten, but like, um, yeah, a lot of work to be done. A lot of work to be done. Yeah. And and that's that's why like we really appreciate and respect uh, people like yourself because you guys are doing a lot of work, getting your hands dirty. Yep. Um, Lack of resources, lack of funding, and yep. you just find a way. I never heard you complain about anything. Nah, just nah. getting on with it. And I know David Tour does the same. Yeah, he works with youth, and it's not business driven. Nah. I think if you guys were Indian, it'd probably be more business more driven. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. I know. I know for a fact. So, like, when I got out, and um, my sister and that were all um, doing the gym and stuff, you know, yeah. they didn't. Um, they had to put per their own personal money. And just to keep the lights on, you know, like they weren't so. So, I took it upon myself to sort of like help them, like so. So they were they were they were still going through their own careers as well. So now we're sort of divvied up like um, responsibilities within the gym, um, even um, trying to get people more people in the door, just so we can keep the lights on, mm. and then we can do more with what we want to do with like say youth and the and the um, and the young and the children and that, you know. What an awesome opportunity, eh? to like help the children and the youth. Yeah. It's cool how you guys are like utilizing it as well, just showing kids that you don't have to have flashy equipment or anything yep. like that. You can start from here and make it to yep. the very top. Yeah, it's definitely been uh, like a, a bit of a process getting like even just pads and stuff, you know? Yep. Um, my sister's done such a good job. She's done such a good job just here in, in Sammy, you know? Yep. Um, but yeah, like it, it, it's been a uh, soul filling journey with them you know like like i'm so grateful for the journey that i could partake with them you know it's just like yeah it's just like just just like warm as my heart feels like i've got purpose when i step into, into the gym and, and i see these people like a cave you know because I, I know 100 percent we're helping them in other factors of their life yeah it might just be an hour here but the hour here is helping them somewhere else in their life you know just health wise whatever you know no doubt no doubt yeah I know since um, since I've done a little bit of um, training as well, mm. it's the mental that it makes you so, so much stronger, especially yep. outside of the ring as well. Yeah. Because you know when you're pushing on that last round, you can do that for any situation outside of the ring. Yeah. And that's what I think is so amazing about how your your story is your journey is that yeah. you whatever's happened in the past, you're still inspiring other kids because you're still jumping in the ring now, like yep. you said before, you know. You yep. want to show the kids that I'm still doing it. I, I think uh, uh, one of the things that it teaches kids is like, um, especially is, is resilience, you know? Yeah. And like um, sticking at something, committing at something, the benefits like um, that you can get when you, you um, place blocks here, you know? And, and it's been good. It's been good. I, I believe that um, the best is yet to come for these kids and that and everything that we can do for them as well. Yeah, for sure, man. Hey, Ants, I've got one question for you. Yep. What was the most memorable um, memory that you have? in fighting what's it's your favorite me. favorite thing that's ever happened in the ring for you or even outside the ring outside the ring oh i've got so many memories um probably the japan fight yeah the japan fight um there's someone that i idolized man this guy uh, i ended up fighting him 
but but um, he's like a uh, MMA um, legend, you know. He's um, he um, only person to arm by Randy Couture. Oh no! He's like... fought on those pride. He's been a pride champion for those um Japanese um Japanese competitions and that. Yep. He's a dude. So when I fought that first fight in Japan. I had the two people that I look up to, which was Jason Suddy and um, Enson Inoue, um, just on the corner of my ring. So after I beat them, I went over and I got to hug the both of them. Yeah. And, and even before that fight, I got to sit down with both of them. So that would probably be my most memorable, was just being amongst the two people that like I just idolized and, and um, yeah, and just being there for a cool moment in my life. So they were sharing a moment of my life. Well, I, I'm sorry, I was sharing a moment of my life with the two people that I sort of idolize and, and the reason like, wow, I am the way I am, you know? Yeah, that's amazing. Um, sorry to interrupt, I actually have another question. Yeah. <laughs> so this, um, that over here, this yeah. bang. Was that just natural or how, how did that come about in the ring? Um, it's, it's, you think it's like that South Auckland in you? I think it's the South Auckland in me. Yeah. I think it's the South Auckland in me, and I, I think it's just like, like when I done it the first time in my fight, just before this one. Yeah, yeah. My, I could he actually hear my corner going, "What the fuck are you doing?" <laughs> because I had won the whole fight. Like I'd won pretty much the whole fight. <clears throat> like I was, I, I was, I hit on points. Yeah. Like, what? Why would you risk it, risk it yeah. for the last thing? But I feel like. I feel like that's like your time to shine, your time to be great, you know? Like um like Bess Holloway does it. And and even though he done it first, obviously sorry, no, he didn't do it first. He he made it famous. Yeah. Um we've we've been doing it for years, South Auckland, yeah. Um, people of New Zealand, all all up and down New Zealand, it's just something we do, you know? Like to come over here and just do not move. We're just throwing down to have resorted this issue, you know. Well, I think we were talking about like the uh, legendary Mark Hunt and Ray Sifu fight. And yeah. Yeah. And Ray Sufu's your uncle. Yeah, so he is my mother's cousin's son. Yeah. And um he has a, a, a big influence in in uh, martial arts for my sister, my older sister, because they're a lot closer in age group. I didn't get get any of that influence, yeah. but she did. Yeah. But um yeah, yeah, that, that fight is uh I think it's it's rated K one's best ever fight. No, yeah, and that's that's, that's, that's a that's a big call for for um, a big um, company that's had so many good fighters go through there. Yeah. But yeah, um, like for instance, those two, you know, just the stand and bang is just uh, something that we've done in, in um, South Auckland and yep. in New Zealand since forever. Yeah. I got a, um, a rapid fire round for you. Yeah. Um, so you have to answer really, really quickly. Okay. Okay. Um, what's your favorite workout song? Uh, Mini Men. Mini Men. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 50 cent, yeah, yeah. This yeah. is the Punjabi 50 cent. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's, uh, what's your favorite cheat meal? Chocolate. Chocolate. Uh, what's your hobby outside of sports? Riding bikes. Riding bikes. Uh, what's something unexpected that people will be surprised to learn listening? Ah, um, I play instruments. I don't know. I play drums. Yeah. I like heavy metal. I play I play drums to heavy metal. Oh, wow. sick. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if that's interesting, but yeah, that's something. That's interesting. That's interesting. <laughs> and then, um, what advice do you have for up and coming, aspiring uh, uh, fighters and athletes? What advice would you give someone looking to pursue a career in kickboxing or MMA or dreams of going to UFC or BKFC? Yeah. Um, master discipline. Mm. Discipline is like probably something that you master that everything else falls sort of falls into place mm. and um surround people surround yourself with people that you trust mm. and that are going to further you mm. yeah. not people that you find comfortable so i'm pointing at um Gagan. he's behind the camera i was thinking when you were talking about alcohol yeah i was like can we bring him in <laughs> <laughs> just throw him right under the bus <laughs> eh? <laughs> um, Legacy, uh, how would you want to be remembered um, in the world of kickboxing and martial arts? Um, someone that was not afraid to fight, mm. like um, someone that loved the sport for the sport, or was never about anything else, mm. and um, someone that gave back. Bro, you're the man. I'm going to do something on the fly, something quite unusual. Um, one of the people that we really trust, so we have a small circle of friends, and um, 
we really trust and respect each other. And one person that makes us all look good and he never comes in front of the camera is Gagan. He's the yep. uh, owner of Frame Fusion. And yep. like cool. anytime we call him, uh, like we, we were lucky enough to get a, uh, a podcast done with Mark Hunt. Yep. And um, I was thinking when you were talking about Jason Suddy, how he just said yes to your fight with Hasim Rockman <laughs> and then sorted it out later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can only do that if there's like trust and respect and friendship because you know hey, your, boy, your boy's got your back. And I put these guys under stressful situations all the time because yep. we've got work to do, appraisals to do. We're going here, got businesses to run and meetings. And we're like everybody shuffles in my friend circle their schedules for me. I just wanted to bring in Gaganpaji and see if he had any questions for you, please. Okay, 100%. Yeah, yeah cool. Kevin, how are you? Hey. Let's see, man. see you too. Yeah, man, the fold, like, you know. yeah, 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 I know. <laughs> but um, thank you, thank you for the setup and thank you for everything, oh, no, it's man. It's all right, man. It's all right, and uh, I love what you do. Like you know, I, I, to be honest, like you know, I'm not really into sports, mm. and I don't know many like you know sporty people. Uh, but like you know, when I was talking to Ahmed and I was learning about you, man, I, I have a huge respect for what you do for the community, man. And uh, I, I, since the day I have landed uh, uh, to New Zealand, like you know, uh, October 2011. I have been a South Auckland guy. Like yeah. you know, I've lived here, like you know, moved like from Papito to Monreva to like you know Flatbush, all this. But like you know, I've been connected to uh, uh, South Auckland all my life. Yeah. And uh, I um, I have a really huge respect, man. What do you do? And oh, thank uh, you very you much. Know, it was really a pleasure to meet you, man. Yeah, yeah. pleasure is all mine. Thank you very much. Cool. But uh, if you come in, uh, you know, listen to the podcast. Thank you, Val. Thank you, Ants. Like, um, I feel like you're one of the living legends, and um, well, thank um, thanks for giving us this honor. And and you've always behind the scenes. I just want people to know you're like super kind, super approachable, super friendly, and um, I think we think we're we're really excited. We think you're going to do some really amazing, amazing things, things. And, the, and the best is yet to come. And we know you've been through massive adversity and like you give us inspiration because you just relentless don't don't give up and uh, yes. that's what we're doing with this podcast so uh, we're going to reach out to jason Suddy after this cool we seen uh joseph parker a message he said he's keen we're going yep. global from new zealand from south auckland and yep. um you inspire us brother thank wow, you so thank much you, that was cool. thank you very much thank you brother appreciate thank your you. time man. Uh, i appreciate you thank you so much that was awesome thank you brother.